Hi everybody, this is part three of tips to being an independent art student or artist because even if you're a professional you're still going to want to study all the time and you might not always have a community. So this is what that's about. If you don't have a community of friends and people around who you can study with, who you can bounce ideas off of and constantly refer to different art things and basically have this pocket full of people who are always talking about art and stuff, if you have to be that pocket for yourself then that's what this video is about. This is part three, and this is in a video series where I'm talking about Watts Atelier mostly, and various tips regarding and related to this book. And this book is in the description of the video. You can check it out there. And I'm also gonna talk about this crafty little pencil today, and kind of this guy too, needed eraser, but more so this. Um, this is a Conte à Paris, Paris, um, Gotta work on my French. Charcoal pencil. And you can see how it's sharpened. I was actually gonna bring a pencil that comes like when you when you buy it, it doesn't look like this. I use a razor blade and I sharpen it like this. Well, <laughs> I sharpen it to this, like this with a little razor blade. And this guy, particularly here, is a great little pencil. Um, I use it because Watts Atelier, more French, what's up with this? Um, Jeff Watts founded this school in San Diego, it's where the school is, but they have an online program, which I've been taking for several years now, and that school uses this pencil. They use a few other kinds of pencils, but these are kind of the main ones, and all the drawings in here, in this book, are done in either that pencil or the couple others, which are very similar. Um, you can see the drawings here, I'll flip through a little bit. Really exquisite charcoal drawings, close-ups of the pages. He's using newsprint paper and he's drawing with this pencil and with the kneaded eraser. Um, the tip I want to talk to you about today is the first two tips were be your own school right? So if you don't have a community, you have to find people and you have to kind of, you, if you can't find people, you have to constantly reference stuff yourself so that it's as if you were in a school and a student would walk by and say, hey, I was just checking out this sweet art thing and be like, oh, I never heard of that before. Da, da, da. And so if you don't have that, you have to constantly do it yourself, right? Which is even if you have an online forum or if there's, there's, you know, millions of YouTube things and um, art blogs and whatever there is that, you know, maybe I'll talk about some of that because there's really some really specific great ones, um, things to look at online. But it still takes oneself to go to the computer or wherever, grab an art book and sit down and then look at it. Um, so it takes discipline and it takes the focused effort to, to be your own school. The second tip was about good reference and that's why I'm talking about all these art books and this one, you can see how big it is. It's giant and it's ideal for studying. We want big reference to study from. At the same time, another good thing is to study material that's done in the same way that you're trying to study. So the benefit of studying in traditional medium, and especially when it comes to following a certain procedure and a certain angle of how you can study, um, is that you know what tools you're using and basically, if I'm gonna try and draw this, well, this one's graphite actually, that's not the best example. This one, charcoal drawing here, if I wanna draw that and study it and see if I can match what Jeff did, then I know that I'm in good hands or that my pencil's in good hands because I'm using that terrible pun, so I don't know. The, I'm using the pencil that he used to make that. Whereas if I was gonna draw something else from a different person or if I was gonna do something like digital, when you study something digitally, you have no idea what kind of brushes that person used unless they specify it in the, in the image or in the description of the image, which could be possible. But there's just so much to digital that if you're gonna study, <clears throat> say an image, and try to copy it, you don't know what fancy tools they may have been using that you don't even know about that allowed them to achieve what they achieved in the image. But if I'm studying this book with that pencil, then I know that Jeff used the exact same thing. He 
and and then any any sort of thing that's not as good in my image when I compare it I know it's not about the tools but it's about just the efficiency and the proficiency and the ability to create a beautiful drawing and that's what it comes down to and so there's no shortcuts to hide behind you're not like able to say well he had this nice equipment to it and I couldn't do it that way so you know that's why it's his is better or something not that you you know you kind of just common sense not to do that um but <laughs> but it is important to to study from material study things that are done in the same tool that that you're um, studying in because it can help in the sense that i've been trying to say all these french words and if i can't speak the word in french very well then and if i can't speak the word in english very well then it's going to be a lot more difficult to like add a third language onto that like german or something whereas if i know english well enough that i am very fluent in it i can talk about it and i can communicate what it is i'd like to express then moving into french won't be as hard it will have difficulty of course um if you're just learning it for the first time but at the same time it'll be much easier because you'll understand what language is as a whole before you try and add something that, that's very complex into your repertoire of communication so in the same sense charcoal this specific pencil is like a language to itself so we have charcoal graphite pencil again Comte à Paris is the pencil 1710b is the one you want and there's a link in the description you can check it out um, if you want to study in this method and then I'm studying the same material I'm studying charcoal drawings to learn how to better draw in the charcoal method if I wanted to really dive into charcoal which this is what I'm doing I'm really learning this tool and this method of study and medium as a language because it's like learning English and if I can learn English really well then I can understand the subtleties of what it means to have a soft edge versus a hard edge a curved versus straight a um, dark versus light and all the warm versus cool you can't really do that in the pencil uh, version but all the different things that you have to learn to be really good at art um, representation art specifically um, if you learn them all in one medium then it's gonna be much easier to jump to another medium and begin to understand how to apply those same principles in the new language but if I'm hopping around all the time then I don't really know how good I'm getting or how fluent in one specific, specific language um, so you can choose whatever you want really um, you could get you could just do digital like uh, artists like Craig Mullins it's like his prime thing he does is digital he does other stuff um, but you know he's he's called like the master or the godfather of digital painting so you can choose medium and you can stick with it I'm choosing this and the primary reasons are because the dexterity you get from using an implement like this that's much different than writing um, how you write with a normal pencil right most people learn to draw how they write and you hold it like this and you just I actually hold my pencil how I write a little weird maybe this is more how people <laughs> use it um, but it, it doesn't give you as many options whereas this pencil has so many variations of the way you can do a line the way you can hold it and use it on your paper and it's really allowing you to learn how to paint. So I haven't gone into painting too much, actually, at least in a traditional way. I've done some gouache and oil and stuff, but I'm going to that soon because that's what I want. Um, but I'm really glad I've stuck with this long enough to really understand the, understand it experientially, why this is gonna help me with painting. And it's because it's painting, you're, you're much further away you're holding it like this kind of thing further from distance of your thing and then the brush goes in and out of the paper where here it's just hard and you can emulate what it's like for the the paint to go on thicker thinner and in and out with this by turning it and twisting it and all that 
So this is my chosen language and the tip for today is to choose a language and stick with it and really kind of binge it for a while, get used to it. Ugh, these are fun to play with these. Um, and, you know, learn, learn some fundamentals with one language instead of moving on to so many others and, and not really understanding the principles in a subtle way. The other thing about like say digital compared to this pencil is this allows for so much more subtlety of drawing whereas digital I mean you can do it but you have to use like obviously there's amazing digital work but just the way that a Wacom pen or whatever tablet you're using it just is not as subtle as a real object yet um, you know maybe one day the technology will get there but at the time or at right now um, and maybe there are you know super expensive tablets or something but it's just not the same for me anyway I like the paper to the pencil aspect and I love this pencil I just love it so there you go